Well, seeing some interesting rumblings around on the real estate market, it seems as though things are finally starting to cool off. Um, 2020 through 2021 has been a completely unprecedented real estate boom on top of what I already consider to be a pretty substantial real estate and asset bubble. Um, you know, I have to, everything that I say about real estate pretty much goes for stocks, bonds, uh, you know, and any other um, risk asset. And, you know, we have seen some softness in in equity and, bond, and the bond markets recently here, but I don't think it's directly tied to what's going on with real estate. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't know why this is happening now. I mean, I would have thought that yes, that la you know, all the last year when we had all the lockdowns and things and that that would have had a um, the big negative effect on real estate, all of the economic devastation. Um, but as we saw, the the authorities were able to pump in enough money um, in order to keep all risk assets afloat and send them straight to the moon. Um, it's quite possible now that what we witnessed over the past year and a half or so uh, was the crack up boom, which uh, you know you you've probably heard that term a lot uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, that was Mises's term for for when the monetary authority doubles down on uh, inflationary policy and says, you know what, we're going to have to avoid a recession at all costs. We will not tighten our policy. We will not rein in uh, this distorted market. We're not gonna pop the bubble. We're just going to put the, you know, put the pedal to the metal. And the result of that is a crack up boom, a very rapid and um, intense rise in asset prices, which is shortly followed by uh, a spectacular collapse. Now, I don't know if you, any of you guys are familiar with a channel on YouTube called ReVenture Consulting. Um, I guess he's a real estate investment consultant, uh, but he puts out a lot of good videos. He's been doing a lot more content lately, um, and I was quite impressed a couple months ago on his channel. He um, you know, he made the call that he that when the real estate market starts to turn, it's going to be in Boise, Idaho first. Um, and he, I, I really like his charts that he puts out. He he, he does a good job compiling data um, and different metrics and organizing it uh, for you because you know it's not like you can just go to Fred, uh, you know, Federal Reserve economic data and pull up a lot of these metrics. He makes his own graphs. He goes and he gathers the data himself from different sources. Um, and puts it together and makes very interesting charts. And so that's my plug for him, but he's not, you know, my only, um, he's not the main, re the only reason I'm making this video today. But suffice it to say, he uh, would, appears to be correct in his Boise call. Um, the, the real estate market there does seem to be cooling off rapidly. Um, we're seeing a lot of price cuts. Uh, we're seeing a lot of price cuts out west in general. Um, and as far east, so as, as far east as Austin, Texas now, we're not seeing uh, housing markets at all really cool off price-wise east of the Mississippi yet, but just anecdotally talking to uh, uh, local realtors here, um, they, where I am in the, you know, in the southeast, I'm in Florida, um, they are getting the feeling that things are cooling off, even though pr the price cuts are not coming yet, but it, but property that they thought that they you know that they listed and that they thought they would you know have an offer on in a week and sold um all of a sudden it's been a you know a couple of weeks a month and they're not getting any showings that is a cooling off in the housing market that's what that looks like this is the sort of activity that you see which precedes price cuts um what reventure consulting is looking at in his videos um or at least one of his uh, i guess i'll link to the video in the description um one that specifically they did last week, talking about the num you know the increasing price cuts in all these different markets that he's seeing out west. Um, what precedes those price cuts are houses sitting on the market without offers and without showings. That's why people are cutting their prices. They're cutting their prices to attract new buyers. And so we might not be at that stage here, uh, in you know in the south, but. We, may, we probably aren't that far behind the West because not too long ago, um, the West was just as hot 
as uh, the Southeast. Now, once the ball gets rolling, um, a housing uh, a housing crash can pick up speed fairly quickly. Now, it is still a housing market, so it does move slowly. It's not like the stock market where it can crash in a week uh, or in a day, even. Um, housing, you know, it takes time for, for word to travel. Deals take longer to close. And so, naturally, you know, you can kind of... Once the, once the mood starts to change, you can see where it's going. And because of that, because people can see the, way, the direction that the market is going before it actually goes there, you, you're prone to um, spooking homeowners into selling because they, they see, every, they see you know, the direction that the market is moving and they say, you know what? <laughs> I got I got to run for the exits. I want to get as much money out of this house while I still can. And so once the mood starts to change, once people get the idea in their head, hey, the market is going to go down rather than up, um, a lot of people decide, you know what? I just don't want to own this house that much. I want to get the equity that I have in it right now out of it. I want to sell it and make my money. Um, or if I paid up, you know a lot for this house and you know and I bought it at the top of the market, now it looks like it's going to go down. I want to get out of this house. Um, so that I'm not underwater in my mortgage. And so what would you expect to see then? You would expect to see not just a lot of price cuts. You would expect to see higher inventory. And that's what I'm waiting for because inventory is um, as scarce as can be in this part of the world. And I don't know what inventory looks like out west. Uh, I would have to do more research into that. But if we're seeing this many price cuts and... Housing prices are starting to uh, come down to earth over there. You're going to see people running for the exits, and that means more inventory, which is, you know, would be a great thing as far as I'm concerned, as far as most people are concerned. Um, you know, rising housing prices is not great for society overall. People need places to live. Uh, I mean, it's great if you already own a house, unless you plan on staying at a house then, in, in which case you're going to have to suffer from uh, higher property taxes. Uh, so, I mean, generally, you would like housing prices to stay stable like they did for most of the 20th century. So with that said, I think I'm going to start following, you know, my local housing market here a little closer to see what's going on. Um, I'm going to start looking for first price cuts and second, uh, lots of new inventory. And, you know, generally just ask around, talk to people about their experience, what they're seeing. Um, because that is going to get you, uh, you know, much better intelligence than just... You know, listening to CNBC or something, certainly. You know, a housing market is not something that you can just, uh, um, you know, that you can, it's not something you can operate in from behind your Bloomberg terminal. Yeah, you need more data than that. You need to understand the mood. It's, you know, it's very, I mean, markets are always emotional. So, I guess I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.